What's up guys, this is Sher talking, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'll be making a full review for the Romancing Festival Darius Spinner. Or is it called Razen? Yes, but that is the best character, we'll be discussing this. Razen is a damage dealer for Slash and Sun, but he's pretty selfish, he's just there for damage. But can inherit some interesting skills if you have his first premium style. Darius is a meta character, he gives a lot of different effects like defense boost, healings and even overdrive he can replace any a uh, very good buffer and then creator is a farmer that's right we're going to start talking about razen first he gives a name to the banner he has 125 percent str and then 82 percent endurance 91 percent will those values are just okay uh, it would not give him problems to avoid ailments he's agility to 92 percent just okay as well, and he has 100% intelligence because of inheritance. Well, he may have some difficulty landing some intelligence-based attacks on newest Remembrance fights, but overall, it's not that bad. Okay, moving on. On start of a turn, he gets this 50% extreme attack boost that increases damage potential by 50%, and also a defense boost that decreases damage taken by 30%, since all of those last for just one turn. Okay. But then on every three turns, coming from the start of battle, you get another stack of this. So a secondary attack boost of 50%, but this time it lasts for two turns. And a secondary defense boost decreasing damage taken by 30% lasts for two turns. So, okay, on turn one and two, just the first passes. On turn three and four, he will have then 100% damage increase and then two stacks of minus 30% damage. But then on turn... Five, he won't have this second part but then again on turn six and seven he will so not really stable but okay starts the fight with 12 bp and fuse all of his overdrive guard to max and then he grants himself this passive called karatsu autumn colors permanent in battle what is this when another surviving ally is being attacked grant oneself the attack boost that increase damage potential by 10% lasts for two turns. I think that because it says being attacked, multi-hits attacks will trigger multiple times. If I'm almost uh, right, please say here in the comment section. He will also recover 1 BP. The 1 BP increase is the most important thing because it's the only way that Razen can get more than just 3 BP in a fight. And the attack boost stacks for two turns. Depending on number of attacks of the enemy, it can increase the damage, but it's nothing outstanding. Okay, so... If someone is attacking, he gets 1 BP. But another surviving ally, he himself won't trigger this. Then, uh, by the end of a turn, he recovers HP by a very small effect. That would be around 250 healing. And then also 25 points of OG Gauge. It's important because he has an OG attack. When landing any attacks, you always chase with Flash Blade. And this is the first problem with Razen. It's a guaranteed chase, but it has E power and it's slash and sun buffs str and intelligence by 15 percent it's like going back to the past times when we had e d power cheese attacks right now we have at least a power sometimes even triple s power attacks multiple chances of chases with strong attacks sadly this is underwhelming but then when attacking on overdrive he will use his skill called karatsu autumn slash that is his skill number three uh, 12 EP cost is here with 4S power, single target, slash, and sun. That is very strong. And cast another Karatsu Autumn Colors. It's not fast, so you still need to go before the enemy. It won't happen all the time, because it only lasts for one turn. So in that turn, if someone else in the party is attacked, you get the attack boost and then the extra EP twice. That's right. But in the best case scenario, you'll be using Karatsu Autumn Slash as a command, chase it again on overdrive, and now you have three stacks of it. If someone else in the party is attacked, then you get 3 BP and 30% attack boost only in that overdrive turn. So it can help him generate a lot of BP in specific turns, and he will then use that to keep using Karatsu Autumn Slash as much as he can. If he doesn't have enough BP, he's going to use Flash Blade. Then, uh, he starts the turn getting this weak heat up. That is just the normal heat up, but exclusive to when you land weak attacks. So, 
50% per turn to a max of 200% damage increase. Well, that is an evolution of the heat up mechanic. We usually use characters when landing weak attacks anyway. So that's fine since you can get the uh, usual 100% attack boost in most turns, sometimes just 50%, and all the extra ones that you can get from Karatsu Autumn Callers. The problem here is that Rosen has a very weak chase. If he had something better, that would give him better effects because just 15% buff is not really that great in current game as well, it would have been better. His second skill is really non important. It's a 5vp single target spell. So if we'll be using his agility and intelligence that I already said, we will have low accuracy and has just deep power. For 5vp, you'll be granting yourself this Karatsu Autumn Callers. It was like that in JP, uh, since the skill number 3 didn't have the Karatsu Autumn Callers attached to it. So when they change it, they allow it him to get the effect on overdrive, but also when using as command, so forget the second skill. It's useless. Cycle just skill 3 and skill 1. Since you get Overdrive on turn 1, it's even okay to start with the Karatsu Autumn Slash and try to regain as much VP as possible and keep up the fast skill all the time. But now, I believe the Razen is actually better with the Inheritance if you have his first premium style. You can use him as a healer with Merciful Light, exclusive to Remembrance in my opinion, because he's a damage dealer, should not be healing. This heals by quite a lot if you're using a great sword with this element, and then we will apply an uh, end of turn region. You can also inherit Resonant Regent Blade, that is a single target attack with just S power. Okay, it will decrease his power by quite a lot, but if you're using it on Remembrance, again, you are giving 20% attack boost for the party for two turns, will stack with all other sources of attack boost, and decrease damage taken by 25%, that's for two turns. It is cheaper, it's just 9 BP. Meaning that uh, sometimes you will be able to keep using this if you are using Overdrive a lot. Usually, Razen will get into Overdrive every two turns. So, turn 3 he uses Overdrive, then turn 6 he uses Overdrive. Usually like that, sometimes faster, but it will depend on number of attacks of the enemies. So, keeping up some defense boosts will help you on Remembrance. And you can also inherit Relief Zone from the Welfare style. And you can use him to clear the buffs and also buff will by 25%. Since it costs just 7, he can also probably keep this up if the enemies attack the party a lot. So it's interesting that you can use him on Remembrance as a full damage dealer if you want, or as a defense and attack booster, or as a healer, or as a will buffer and debuff cleanser. But uh, as a full time damage dealer, Razen is just okay. He doesn't have very good cycles because he relies on boss behavior. His chase attack is pretty weak and Slash is convoluted. There are much better Slash damage dealers already, like Ihachi, and we'll get even better ones in the future. So he works because he's Great Sword. We are in need of extra Great Sword damage dealers, but he also loses to Noel that just got released and he is much better. He buffs the party via STR. He also has a much better overdrive and normal chase and as for some damage if you have all kaiser you're pretty sad although razen will do more damage all kaiser has much better kit he has glory force that can give you lots of offense and defensive support and there is an evasion he can also heal and give defense boost the much better character here but if you don't have all kaiser for some damage he can use it just doesn't have anywhere near close the potential. So, in the end, he just works, but it's nothing stellar. I will say that he deserves a 3.5 out of 5 in my new grading system. The next character is Darius, and this one is pretty interesting. 104% endurance and will. They gave him a better STR, reaching now 120, but he's not made for this, so you should actually forget about damage. He has uh, okay status for other stuff like agility being 91, but he has fast skills. Love and charisma are on the average levels, but he can use healing. Start of the fight, he fuels all surviving allies, including himself, overdrive guard through the max. That's pretty nice. And he will also give this over enhance, increasing overdrive damage by 50%, right on start. Then he will also give this passive that when you are attacking on overdrive, well, when you are attacking, meaning that your character has multi-attacks, that means chase attacks, not multi-hits, 
a rebuffing STR Endurance and Agility by 15%. This is pretty much similar to what we got in the past with Barthelemy. Barthelemy had uh, the same type of effect, but in his case, he was just giving STR Dexterity and Intelligence. As you can see, Barthelemy has full offensive status, but he has STR Dexterity and Intelligence, while Darius has something else. He has also defensive status. He wants to give you endurance and i think that could be interesting in some situations but str and agility means it works for plenty of damage dealers but better for mrt in compared to barthelemy then on the start of battle he grants himself banquet host that will be permanent in battle by the end of a turn he will be giving 15 points of og guard to everyone and also recover 2 bp that is also similar to what we got with Barthelemy, but Barthelemy, in his case, he has to attack. You can see that his skill number 2 gives 25 points, but he uses 6 BP. That is actually not as good as Darius, in my opinion, that can give passively. Sadly, we will have to keep comparing these characters here because they are pretty much similar and that is the evolution of the strategy okay also at the end of every five turns counting from the start of battle he will grant himself a new passive call it hospitality and that will trigger two times that means that on turn five and then on turn ten you have this effect first time once and then by turn ten onwards twice turn five he'll be buffing str and intelligence by 15 percent turn 10 by 30. You will also be granting all surviving allies an attack boost that increases damage potential by 15% on turn 5, and then by turn 10 by 30. He will recover his own BP by plus 2 on turn 5, and then by plus 4 on turn 10 onwards. So, pretty nice stuff, and it's interesting that here he buffs STR and Intelligence, while he actually gives a passive that buffs STR, Endurance, and Agility. He tries to keep pages on the squad but there's no dexterity buffs here so your leon can use it here but won't be buffing because of these passives now he has 30 percent damage reduction at all times and when attacked by spells he will reduce that damage taken by another 40. nice because usually bosses like hybrid and they can attack with physical and spell based since he already has at least 30 percent damage reduction and good status he won't be taking that much damage now the first skill is called banquet of gratitude it's a support fast skill for single target that <laughs> has a lot of different effects the first ones are guaranteed here we have a defense boost that increases damage taken by 15 percent lasts for three turns he will then cast uh hp healing by around 250 and grant uh end of turn recover that we'll be recovering around 150 as well for two turns so instant same turn in the end next turn in the end around 750 healing it's okay for 2 bp and he can cap uh, this as much as he wants there's no limit or lp usage but 2 bp right then he has a 37 percent chance to also grant the target uh attack boost that will increase damage potential by 50 percent last for two turns he also has a 37% chance to grant the evasion for one time that lasts two turns. One time means one hit. And then a 37% chance to also recover BP by five. So those three chances are separated and they can trigger or not. You get one, two, three, or nothing. Okay, I don't recommend using this because that is actually wants to keep a perfect cycle of his skill number two. Great banquet of enjoyment it support fast you hit all allies and he gives a defense boost for all at decreased damage taken by 25 percent last for three turns you then heal then instantly with uh, around 250 healing and cast an end of turn heal for two turns so overall 750 healing instant then the end of the same turn and then the end of the next turn again this guy does not cost lp or limited usage so this is a very good source of healing and he still has this one random surviving ally gets a 50 percent attack boost lasts for three turns you don't know who will get this but if it's your damage dealer it's gonna help you then grant one evasion for a random ally that 
one time in two turns and recover a random surviving ally BP by five. This can be triggered to himself. It would be nice if he gets the BP because he needs on the start. So treat this as an extra effect. You are here for the healings and the support defense boost. Because this is fast, it's actually pretty useful and very comparable to you know who? Liz. And why Liz? Because she is a meta character. She has... Oops, that's the wrong Liz. That skill called Dragon's Blessing, where she also has a defense boost of medium effect. The difference is that hers can last for 4 turns, and you can stack 4 stacks of it. You need extra BP uh, help, because she will not be able to keep casting. And she casts 1 HP heal only, and gives 1 BP. If you think that he gives 5 to a random ally, theoretically, it's... Uh, the same amount because she gives one to each one of your five characters he gives five to a random one and she just heals once and he has a uh, end of turn healing see that they are very comparable they don't do damage as well and i believe that if you use them together you're gonna rec decrease the damage taken from enemies by quite a lot this also heals every three turns she's amazing but you can also replace this with that is just fine but now, uh, sometimes we use Liz together with Enya. And Enya is a very useful style. And there is still something bad about her. She needs 9 BP to cast her defense boost. Her damage is very bad. But she can also buff when she's attacking. Sometimes you need that extra buff. But if you don't need that extra buff, it will be easier to combo Liz and that is together. But not just Liz, you can also use other characters, like for example, Sirius. I've been discussing Sirius recently. And Gathered. Those characters are actually uh, similar in a way that they are trying to give defense boosts, but they are a little different with what they bring beside the defense boosts. Gathered, for example, can give lots of attack boosts as well. Gathered and that is together can be much more offensive than Enya and Liz, for example. So, if you don't have at least two of these cards I'm mentioning, you are actually uh, getting a lot of value out of Darius. But even if you have, he is a little different, and he uses Axis. He will help a lot of Remembrance. He is there as a replacement for Aonus, and for some other healer and defense booster. Sometimes we need a trick here to do what Darius is doing here. Okay, so the skill is nice and can use it on real hard challenges. And that's his main selling point. He still has reverse delta plus. That is not really useful. It's a 9 BP double S power attack that has slash and blunt damage for single target. Before attacking, grants his attack boost of 30% damage increase for two turns and then attacks. But even if he has the status for damage, you don't want to use this. You actually want to keep your defense boosts and healings. Remember that if you cast this... A uh, great banquet of enjoyment two times in a row. He would then have two end of turns healing stacked. That's quite a lot. <laughs> and if you have buffers that are buffing love and charisma, your healings will increase. Like Matriarch, for example. If you are allowed to buff, Matriarch is enough to be your main buffer. And Darius can help being the healer, reduce the stress of Matriarch. She can also heal, but only when you really need to heal more. And if you are not bringing lists for the healings, you can sometimes just use Darius. So, very interesting setup, but how does he keep this up? Remember that on start, he only has uh, 3 BP per turn. Okay, if you are using him without any other external source of BP generation, he will have to use Bunkit of Gratitude on turn 1, then skip turn 2 and use maybe a normal attack even, and then on turn 3, you use that again. So you will have uh, just two stacks of defense boost decreasing damage taken by 25% with each. It should still be good because of the extra end of turn healing. As for a skill that you can use instead of a normal attack, you could inherit Solid Axe because it's just 1 BP. But I would still prefer to just use a normal. He has this Smash Strike from his Platinum style that it's better because it has Slash and Blunt, but... It's almost a normal attack anyway. You can also inherit Blocking Command if you want. It's a 4 BP skill that has 2 damage blocks, can be used 2 times per battle. It's not necessary for his build, but it does help. 
or it's not that much, but I prefer to use this later. You need to get extra effects, maybe use Alkaiser with his evasion together with Darius, or use Matriarch's healing when you desperately need, and then leave that damage block for when you have extra BP, because on start, Darius needs to apply defense boosts. You can also inherit that advancing charge that will give him this uh, defense up, decrease damage taken by another 20%, and then give a hit up for everyone in the party by 15% damage increase. Assault Command makes no sense with this version of him, because he actually needs to use his skill to get all of the effects, since everything else is just here for overdrive. See? When he deal, uh, deals passively, it's the overdrive arch fill it, the extra overdrive damage, overdrive passive and when attacking and the extra od points for everyone so you have to use this skill and the best skill will always be the second one now if he has the help of liz he can keep using this skill faster if he has the help of shirei then he's gonna keep using this a lot shirei is a very good companion for darius so this character is really really impressive because he is an axe user so he's instantly meta for remembrance but he is competing with some of the best characters we have right now for hard challenges. And he has a space because he's not exactly like then. He has something extra, like better healing and extra overdrive support. So both offense and defense support. I'll be giving him a 4.5 out of 5 just because of his PP problems. But still a very good character that is better used when you are choosing well your other party members. The last character is Creator, and he is a farmer who time with just 133% intelligence, the highest one in the game right now, and 115% agility, also one of the highest ones for Nom Emarts. 88% endurance and 91% will, but you should not care much about this because he's not made for anything besides farming. Well, he then has this critical stance. All of his attacks will be critical, increasing damage by 20%. And then all range or ranged attacks will be increased by 40%. He also reduces damage taken by 25% if you really want to use him for something besides grind. Weak attack damage increases by 20%, starts the fight with 13 and then when landing an attack that defeats a target, recovers 10 MP, so that he can keep soloing content. Then he has a 30% damage increase when using MRs, and then another 20% damage increase when landing weak attacks. So he has 110% damage increase for AoE attacks and 70% damage increase for single targets. You can still use him for single target attacks, but we'll be discussing this later. Well, the first skill is called Burst Nova. A 13, yes, 13 MP skill with a power AoE Blunt and Heat. That's it. No additional effect. Blunt and Heat. It's nice because it's just one hit and... Well, for this, he has competition for Blunt. You have, for example, Shell. The very good Blunt Farmer, but she's much slower. He has um, use of Purple Sadness Rain and Chase in two times with uh, Purple Smoke and then Incense. But it's much better if you have her him up a Night Wind so that she has two Blunt attacks. But there is also someone like. Red. Red is uh, starting to not work anymore. He uses this Raging Wheel with Fist and two times in a row with the Dragon Stance EX formation. It's two hits and he usually uses the enemies. But the Antarg also works super fine with his Inheritance of Knockout Plus. And we'll get more characters that can farm with Blunt. As for Heat, we have Tomo. Mo has AoE and she has a very strong attack. Call it Warship Impact. She can use twice for farming as well. And now there is also Kral. Kral can also farm with his newest style if he inherits from his other one with Burning Descent. Again, two hits and can farm. But, okay, uh, Creator is a pretty strong one because it's just one hit and he kills targets and Goes again. He can also be used on the Magical Shower EX formation, but this skill here is not fast, so it's sometimes better to use Godspeed Stance instead. Now, the other two attacks are Blunt and Sun, also a power, but they are two hits. 
So you have to choose the stage where the enemies are aligning, either in a column or in a row, and you'll be doing double damage. Much better, right? And Blunt and Sun is different than Blunt and Heat. Blunt, we already discussed it. As for Sun, he has no much competition. He competes with himself. So, remember his past style? Well, the past style has Critter's Flare, that is Heat and Sun. And I was using him for Heat AoE as well. And then he also changes with that interesting Holy Wrath attack, where we have Holy Wrath. Well, Holy Wrath is very powerful as well, you can see here. And he was following for Sun just fine. But now you have extra power, but lower column. You can also inherit other stuff with this creator, for example. You can inherit Purge, but that would be 70% damage increase. It hits between 3 to 4 times. I think sometimes it will be enough to solo a stage, and then he gets enough PP to just attack again and probably solo. But this creator doesn't have any chains. He's all about either double hitting or uh, hitting one sweet burst Nova. Pretty, pretty simple character, to be honest. If you want a full AoE sun attack that is just one hit, you have to inherit Repent from his first hat style. And that one is 13 BP as well. With power, it will be enough to solo. All of his other attacks are not as strong. You can see that they have like B power. And, well, not enough to solo the enemies. So if you have Repent, he can be very fast to clear Sun, but he's already pretty fast to clear Blunt and Heat, and sometimes Blunt and Sun if the enemies are aligned in the right positions. Sadly, this creator is just a farmer, nothing else. If you like the art, because everyone likes, it's amazing. It's okay to pull for him, but overall, as a farmer, I would say a 4.5 out of 5, and as anything else, just a 2.5 out of 5. It's not a really big investment uh, summoning for farmers because we have so many characters that work but if you love creator and you just want to give him even more options well now is your chance none of these characters have future styles so it ends here for now but they are pretty popular and we'll probably get something in the future now back to the banner image is this banner worth summoning for in my opinion yes because of Darius. and razen is an extra with creator being just better for newer players i will be giving this banner a silver award because Razen and Creator are really not necessary with just Darius being really good. Uh, but he is really, really good if you are missing out on some support that can give you defense boosts and all. He is worth, especially because Remembrance lacks support. Then he is your guy for that. Now, Razen is just okay. If you're not uh, very close for a PD and you got Darius, stop there. Don't need to go for Razen or Creator because you get better characters in the future. But I pulled it here because I wanted Darius, still didn't get the guy, and as soon as I get him, I would drop unless I'm very close, like, I don't know, 12,000 coins, I can get Resin, but more because of the inheritance options than for his real damage potential, because that is a little too selfish and not really all that strong. But that is my opinion, what is yours? Please say here in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this. Please subscribe if you haven't. And if you want to support the channel, we have links on the description. Hope to see you soon in the next video or live stream. Bye.